Hey everybody, this is the second video in our Express series. And in this one, what I want to do is actually load in Express React Views. What expect Express React Views is, it's a view engine for Express. So this is not actually React. React is generally a front-end library that allows you to write up your front-end logic in a very particular syntax. What Express React does, Express React Views does, it allows you to use that React syntax, JSX, to write your to write server rendered pages okay so that way you can use jsx on the back end and the front end why not um but it does require some setup so let's let's look into that so let's bring up my screen okay let's go look up the express react views documentation express react views so we already, we already installed the library last time now the question is how do we configure it so we can use it so let's go read the docs. Okay, and yes, I'm doing this live because I think it's good for you guys to see the process of reading docs because you guys should get used to reading docs. Okay, there are other view engines. So like here's a couple examples, Jade, EJS, Handlebars. There's a lot of ways to do this on the server side. So you, it's good to kind of play around and learn a few of them. Okay, oh, and we probably should install React and React DOM. So that's, that's a good point. So let me go back and install those two. So let me kill the server. Control C, npm install, because we already installed Express React Views. So npm install, Control Shift V, React and React DOM. I don't see the React though, I just see act. So React and React DOM. These are the libraries that generally power React. And they're gonna power Express React Views. So we'll let those install. That may take a second. So I will, oh wait, is it, it's complaining. Oh, I guess the re was there. Okay, so let me just reinstall this. npm install react, react dom. Okay, it's installing. And let me pause while that installs. Okay, so that's done installing. So now it's a matter of configuring our middleware for uh, Express React Views, which actually is right here in the documentation. So you'll see here that we already have this piece in our code, so we just need these three lines. And this will set Express React Views in our code. Okay, and essentially what this is doing is just saying that we have a Views folder, that's this folder here, and that Express has a view engine, so by default, Express usually can identify what your view engine is. Once you install like EJS or handlebars, it just kind of knows. But JSX isn't one of those libraries that it kind of knows. So here it's saying, okay, hey, uh, we have a view engine and it's called JSX. And we're gonna have an engine that's called JSX, which is gonna use this Express React Views library. So whenever you know we use this view engine, use this library and, incur and, and inject this function. So that's basically what this, these, this is doing. It's just basically saying, okay, in our views folder, look for JSX files, run this function when you see them. Okay, so we actually need to create a views folder. So in our project in our project folder, so we're gonna create a new folder. It's gonna be called views. Okay, and that's where we're gonna put all of our JSX files. Cool. So let's actually create an index.jsx. So if we here's our index route, our root route. But now we're gonna change this to, instead of res.send, we wanna render a view. So there's a function called render. And what it does is the way, the, fu the render function says, let's render an actual website page. So first you have to tell it, what's the name of the file to look for? It, by default, goes and looks inside your views folder. So we're gonna look for a file called index. It's gonna look for an index.jsx file because we're using uh, JSX, because that's how Express React Views works, okay? So index, and then as a second argument, we can pass it information. So we just pass it an object with information we want to send to that site. So we'll just say, hey, um, we'll pass in cheese. And then it'll be a string called Gouda. Okay, so I'm gonna say, hey, go render the index view, pass it the information, and pass it this object for its use. That's what it says. Cool, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the views folder and I'm going to create a new file called index.js 
okay and then here in the docs we can see kind of how that that's going to get created which is right over here okay so just like if you've ever done react before we have to bring in react <sighs> okay so let's do that do 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 so we're going to do const react equals require react because again this is the back end code so whenever you're a node you're using require and then we just create a component okay and there are two ways to make a component in react so i'll show you both ways so the first way is with a class so look which would look like this it would be like class uh index actually capital index extends react dot component okay and basically we'd have to in this thing we're just going to create a function called render and then here we would have a return and here we would return what's called our jsx which is basically html so if you never use jsx there's basically one big rule in jsx okay everything has to be wrapped with one tag there's a really simple way to get around this just do this react.fragment okay you do that as, and then just do all your code within the react fragment okay and then then you never have to really worry about that whole parent element thing and we're just going to do an h1 that says hello world okay and then i'm going to do another h2 just to show you how do we access that cheese variable we passed in remember we said we asked we sent in a piece of data that said cheese well there's a way to use it it's called props so props in react is always data that's passed in from the outside okay so when you're doing it on the front end you pass it in via like tag properties in here you pass it in through your routes so it would just be props is the props object all the properties that we've were passed in and one of the properties is cheese okay but we have to put a little symbol here so we have to wrap this in curly brackets and what these curly brackets means is that when jsx sees these curly brackets it's going to look inside and then render the variable that's in there so it's going to be like oh okay you don't want me to put props.cheese you want me to put the information that is in props.cheese so we save that and let's go try out our routes I actually have to go run the server so let's go kick up the server node them on server.js we listening on port 3000 okay now if i head back to the index route so we're back to localhost 3000 fail to look at view index and views directory oh i know what i get to add one more thing module dot exports we have to export um the in the, the route or the the component equals index okay and that should do it but let me just double check the docs make sure that's the uh, okay that, that looks good to me so let's hit refresh mm, still doesn't like it so let's see it failed to look up view index what did i call the file oh i called it index.js that is why rename it's supposed to be jsx there we go save it's looking for jsx files in the views folder because that's the instructions we gave it in the middleware and any luck props is not defined okay so it wants us to define props uh, let's see here do they have any example of that's a function okay well i'll show you how you do props in a function component um so let's just try one thing okay constructor props super props usually you only have to do this if you're gonna actually change something in the constructor but let's see maybe maybe that's what we need to do here in the back end so let's refresh 
Okay, I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. So I'm going to get rid of this constructor. Um, I'm going to get rid of this props.cheese for a moment. I'll sh we'll come back to that. Save. And just show you that it renders. So refresh. And there you go. Hello world. So you can build out your whole... So here you can kind of build out your whole web page using sort of a JSX type syntax. And you can create other components and bring them in. And that's sort of the beauty of this. Now this is a class component, which is one way to write um, components. Okay, but the other way you could do it is you can write it as functions. So I could do const index equals, and when it's a function, then you pass in props like this, and then you'd return your JSX. So I would return react dot fragment, then put my h1 in there, hello world. And then let's try that props again. H2. Um, props dot cheese. Oh, I know why it didn't work in the component. Okay, I'll come back. We'll do that again. But first, let's do the, the, the function component. I left something open. Oh, I forgot to put the closing curly bracket there. Forgot it was supposed to be this dot props in a class component. Because it's a class, so I have to use this. But let's go back. And there you go. Hello world Gouda. So I can pass in that data that we passed in in the route. And if you don't remember us passing that in, see I passed in that data cheese here when I defined my actual route in the server.js. Okay. So again, basically that's a function component. I will comment that out for now. Then I'll write the class version again. Class index extends react dot component okay and I don't need the constructor because I'm not doing anything with state don't worry about state here in the back end uh, render okay react dot fragment oh return react dot fragment h1 hello world and then h2 this should be this dot props dot cheese because it's a class component so class you always have to use the keyword this when it's a function you don't okay and that's essentially the same thing as that see there's the function version there's the class version function version class version they do the same thing Okay, but if I refresh this, I should get the same result, and I do. Good. Okay, so we solved that mystery. And let's say one of the, the great thing about React is that you can build it, you don't have to build all your pieces in one file. Okay, so then I can go back, and I can go back to like, uh, let's go bring back my file thing here. So I can go here in views, create another file called, you know, title dot title dot JSX. Okay, and then here again I got a const react equals require react. Here I'm just gonna write a quick function component. Const title equals const title equals props. return and this will just be an h1 h1 hello world okay save and then i will export that module.exports equals title so i'm exporting that component and that's it i've made a component and the cool thing about jsx is i can now bring in that component back to my index so if i go back here i'll bring in that component so we'll say const title equals require uh, and then we'll do dot slash title dot JSX. Bring it in from that file that we have in there. Okay, save. And now what I can do is instead of putting this hello world here, I can now do this title. 
and bring it in as a component and use it that way. So it's the same thing. It's just basically now going to refer to this file where I defined a title. And that's kind of the beauty of JSX, that I can just kind of break this all down. So let me refresh this. It should be the same. And it's still the same. Yay. So I can, so if I have a really big page, I can break it up into a bunch of smaller components and make the code a lot more manageable and easier to read um, instead of having it all sort of one giant page of logic. Um, with that, I think that pretty much gives you a pretty good idea of how this all works. Uh, aside from that, it pretty much works like Express normally does. But just with this, you can now set up a page, generate routes and links and do all sorts of really fun, cool stuff. So I'll leave you guys with that to play with because um, now there's a lot of sirens in the neighborhood because I live in a busy Brooklyn neighborhood. But I'll see you guys later on. Have a great day and enjoy.